Hey, what's up, friends? Let's take a look at Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Uh, we're going to go through just the basics, how to get started, how to create your kingdom, and little tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way. So if you're new to the Mountain Blade series, this will probably be a good video for you. And if you're not, maybe you'll learn something along the way. Alright, so first off, we start with picking our culture. We have six different options. Vlandians, Sturgeons, Empire, Asurai, Kuzites, Batanians. Um, each culture gives a little bit of its lore and a bonus you will receive throughout the game. So if you look down here, we can see Batanians give 10% less speed penalty to parties in the forest biome. Kuzites is extra speed bonus for horsemen on campaign map. Asurai is caravans are 30% cheaper to build and 10% less trade penalty. The Empire gives us 20% construction speed bonus to town projects, wall repairs, and siege engines. And the Sturgeons are 20% less speed penalty from snow. And finally, Valandians are 20% more upgrade XP to troops from battle. Um, going through these, you'll notice quite a few of them are to do with speed penalties on the map. Um, Batanians, for instance, less speed penalty to parties in forests. Uh, in this game, different terrains, you have different speeds that your party moves at. And while speeds are very advantageous uh, into catching enemies and running away, it's not something that is super huge that will help you throughout the game, especially later on once you build your army. Um, there are plenty of things that affect speed, the amount of prisoners you hold, the amount of cavalry you have, the amount of horses you have in your inventory for each given troop. So I tend to avoid any of the speed bonus ones. Also, you don't spend the whole game in the forest. So if you're only getting this bonus while you're in the forest, there's a huge portion of the game you're not receiving your bonus. So a couple to look at here then, without the speed bonuses would be Asurai, caravans 30% cheaper to build and a 10% less trade penalty. Caravans are cool, they give you money, you obviously need money to raise troops, manage your fiefs, that would be your castles, cities, and towns. However, I don't think caravans are the way to go in the current build of this game to make money. Um, We'll talk about that later, but smithing is definitely the way to go. So caravan bonus, not that advantageous. Um, the Empire's construction speed bonus. So this is a good one. Um, construction speed bonus to town projects. Whenever you get a town, you manage it and you build certain upgrades for it, whether that be fortifying the walls, um, upgrading your militia camps to train um, further upgraded troops, uh, etc., etc. And then wall repairs and siege engines are good for, obviously, sieging castles that you're trying to take or cities. Um, so this one's cool, and it does give you a good bonus, but again, it's not one that carries you throughout the entire game. Once you get to a certain point, you're going to realize that managing your towns uh, and your construction speed is going to have a very low impact once you're taking castle left and right, uh, you're just not going to benefit from it as much. The Valandians, 20% more upgrade XP to troops from battle. I feel like this is the absolute most advantageous one you can have. You're always going to be getting and losing troops, and they are always going to need to be upgraded. So the more XP you have for them, the faster you can upgrade them the better, stronger troops you have for battle. So let's go with the Vlandians. Character creation, tons and tons of options, changing your face, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your hair. Obviously you can do everything from cheekbone widening to eye socket depthening. Um, just a ton, a ton of options. Uh, even the voice. So as you can see, you change the voice there. You can make it really high pitched. So he sounds like a little rat. Oh, you know, he sounds like uh, the cat. When Yzma gets turned into a cat in Emperor's New Groove. Maybe not that one, but that one right there. 
Um, I like to go with a deeper voice, you know. It's manly. Sounds cool. Let's make my guy as tall as he can be. And I'm just going to kind of randomize uh, his appearance. Mm-hmm, 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 no, 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 no. Some crazy looking configs in here. Yeah, this guy's okay. It's not something I'd normally pick, but he's okay. We'll go with that guy. Um, so here you pick a little bit of your family background. These give bonuses to your attributes, perks, whatever you want to call them on the side over here. You can see that we have two in each particular set. Um, but as we pick these, we'll get some bonuses. So if you look at Mercenary, it gives us a bonus in Crossbow and a bonus in Roguery. It tells you down here, 10 skill level and one focus point to Roguery and Crossbow, one attribute point to Cunning. So Cunning was also brought up a point. Um, each of these in Warband, the first Bannerlord game, these played a huge role being that if you picked a Baron's Retainer, for instance, you would receive more Renown. And Renown is key to building your kingdom um, I haven't really seen the effects in this game as much, so I don't really focus on that aspect, and I focus more on what traits am I getting from it. So from here, we can see like we've got increased pole arm, increased riding, and an upgrade to social skill, um, increased trade, increased charm, and an upgrade to intelligence, increased pole arm, increased crossbow, upgrade to endurance. Increase two-handed, increase smithing, and an upgrade to vigor. Increase crossbow, increase scouting, and an upgrade to control. And like we stated before, increase crossbow, increase roguery, upgrade to cunning. So as I mentioned previously, I think blacksmithing, smithing in general, is the way to go to earn money in this game. If you do it right, there are some drawbacks to it that we'll go over later. However, alongside of this, you also have the upgrade to two-handed, and I'm a two-handed fighter. I don't like carrying a shield. I like to use long two-handed swords with great reach, great chopping ability. So this is probably the skill or the background that I would choose, Urban Blacksmith. And then you get to pick a little bit of your early childhood lore, so something you were known for as a child etc 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 again these give bonuses to your attributes and your overall skill um, just looking through real quick this might this might be a good one to pick as we can upgrade charm and leadership and an upgrade overall to social charm and leadership they are not the easiest skills to get up they're certainly not hard like if you look at a skill like steward I feel steward is the easiest skill to level up. It's almost a passive because if you have men that follow you in your party, your steward skill levels up. Um, charm, on the other hand, you have to make decisions and you have to talk to people and persuade them or not in order to level up your charm skill. And leadership, it's, it's a slight passive. You'll gain leadership points as you hold an army, keep your morale up. Um, Looking at some of these others, we've got Medicine and Riding, two decent perks. Medicine is used for keeping your troops alive in battle. So it's the decider of whether your troops die or they become wounded. If they die, obviously they're gone. If they become wounded, you're able to heal them and bring them back into your army. So Medicine is definitely a good perk to have. Um, looking through here, this one does uh, Aptitude for Numbers, does Engineering and Trade. So Engineering... It's a tough perk to get up in the beginning. Um, you only get engineering up as you build siege weapons, obviously. But as you're sitting on the map building your siege weapons, there is a very high chance to be attacked from parties that are way larger than yours. And engineering is one of those skills that actually takes a little effort to get up. Um, same goes with trade. Trade is the skill that you actually have to work on. Trade, uh, you get points for buying low and selling high essentially so trade is not the easiest skill to get up especially if you're playing the game fairly um, yes there are plenty and plenty of exploits in this game to further yourself but i prefer to play fairly uh, it's just more fun obviously so look at our leadership we get the increase in tactics and increase in leadership and a overall increase to cunning so i'm going to go with leadership here just to give us a boost in leadership and tactics, which will help us overall with our army. 
Um, another thing or another upgrade option we've got here. Just going through these real quick. I'm going to go ahead and pick this one so we can get the boost to trade and a boost to charm. Again, trade being one of those you actually have to work at and charm being one that is somewhat having to work at. Um, what did we do uh, growing up? Where did we fit in? Just taking a look around. See, we got increased a bow in riding, crossbow in sieging, and riding in pole arms, roguery in throwing, throwing in one handed. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the bow and riding. I tend to use bows over crossbows. Crossbows are stronger. They do have their drawbacks. Uh, most of the time, you're not able to use it on a mount. I think there are a couple exceptions of the lower level crossbows where you can, but when you're getting to the level of actually being efficient with a crossbow, you can't ride it on your horse, and you spend most of the game on your horse. Um, so I'm going to go with bow and riding for this one. So our biggest life achievements, again, looking into our perks here. Um, roguery, athletics, smithing, trade, tactics, and leadership, and two-handed, one-handed. Mm. I'm going to put this one into smithing and trade. As you'll see as this progresses, smithing comes in um, handy <laughs> quite quickly, especially when you don't have a lot of money. Um, let's see, stating our family was attacked, our village was raided, and what did we do to the raiders? Again, more skill point allocations. Um, I'm going to go drove them off with arrows, get an increase in bow and an increase in tactics. Ain't nothing wrong with that. All right, now we'll go with a name. Uh, what's something, something badass? Barathor. Barathor sounds like a... A warrior. Okay, so looking at difficulty of this game, if you've never played a Mountain Blade before, I would highly, highly, highly suggest to keep it on very easy and until you get the hang of it, you can change your difficulty later. For the sake of this video, we're just going to put everything on easy. We don't want it to be excruciatingly hard. We don't want to fail every two seconds, but we also don't want it to be a cakewalk so we can show some more of the aspects to the game. Uh, enabling death in battle chooses if your if lords or heroes can die on the battlefield. Uh, for the sake of continuity in the video, we're going to leave that off. We'll keep everybody alive. Auto allocate clan member perks. This we're going to turn on. So you'll go through the game. You'll get companions. These companions join your clan. Um, and the only way to allocate their perks is if they are currently in your party. So a lot of your companions, you're actually going to have doing other things, whether they're becoming governors, they're running caravans, albeit unsuccessful at the rate of other ways of making money, uh, or you'll use them to create armies or to create parties with that you can recruit to your army. Anything but having the clan member in your actual party, you can't allocate their perks. So I'm just gonna do auto allocate to avoid the headache of sending a clan member out and then pulling them back in and disbanding everything and then starting it all over again. Okay, so jumping in, we're talking to our brother, going, talking about a little bit of the lore here. Uh, I'm going to skip the tutorial, but I highly suggest you do it, especially if you have no idea how the controls are in this game. So they can be quite difficult if you've never played before. All right, so it starts us here, just outside of this little training field in what I would say is nearly the middle of the map. Uh, gives us a little bit of the lore of what's going on. Oh, our family name. Um, Barathor. Barathor Lightbringer. Sounds prolific. Oh, choosing our flag. Um, obviously, it doesn't matter. Well, maybe stay, stay away from the ones that look like Nazi Germany, but uh, let's see. I, I like the serve. Now we'll go with this guy. Make him as big as can be. Red's usually a pretty cool color, and blue usually looks pretty good with red. We're going to go with that. 
Okay, as we can see here, we've got the north, the east, south, the west of the map. This is how I look at the map. Northern, there's snow. Southern is desert. And we've got all of the kingdoms around us. Over here are the Volandians. The green here are the Batanians. The blue up here are the Sturgeons. The teal are the Kuzites. Um, and then the clans in the middle here are all empire. They each have their own subset within the empire. It's not really necessary to go over, but down in the south here we've got the Asarai. But starting off the game, first thing you want to do is obviously recruit troops. You can see we are a party of one with two food. Another thing to keep in mind, our food. So we'll head on over to this village here. We're going to recruit some troops. I'm going to take all of them. Leave. Next village. Recruit troops. Oh. Nobody. Okay. Oh, something you'll notice here is the map speed on regular play times one. It's very slow and it takes forever to get anywhere. So you can fast forward down here. Um, originally, these are macroed to one, two, and three on your keyboard, but I have changed the times one and times two to the side buttons on my mouse. So if you got those, I would recommend doing that. It saves a lot of time, a lot of effort. Okay, so as we're running through here and not finding any troops, uh, our food is going down. So we're going to have to make our way over to a city so we can buy some food so our party members don't leave. Oh, whoops. It's a bit tedious starting out, and if you're not careful, you can get jumped by looters, bandits. See, look at that. A party of 21 looters. I've got six guys. They would probably destroy me. Yikes. Oh, no, 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 no. See, those bandits are coming after me right there. Okay, well, since we're in the town, we're going to buy some food. Um, down in the bottom right here, you can see your party morale. Our base is plus 50. Our personal um, contribution to it is plus 4. And our food variety is negative 2. That's because we only have grain. Our guys want a variety of food to eat. We'll buy another grain. Two more grain because it's very cheap. Uh, we'll get a fish, a meat. Some olives, some grapes, and everything else is uh, quite expensive. So we don't have that much money to start with, and our troops cost money. They have a wage to maintain, stay in our party. So we need to be really careful on the money we spend early game. Um, the goal here is we need to get a decent-sized army in order to go fight looters so we've got about 10 here if we come across some looters with some small parties we'll give it a go jump in there talk a little bit about the fighting mechanics of this game 20 i would like to avoid it's a little too many for my army right now Avoid going to castles. You can't recruit anybody there. That's just a place for lords to hang out. If you need to go talk to them, obviously you can go into the castles, but there's not much that you get from it. I don't know why I keep pressing products. All right, we've got about 16. 16 is not great. It's a decent start, though. Let's go see if we can find some looters. 21. I really don't want to fight them, but let's give it a go. Okay, up here you can see the power that you have. This is this is not determined on the amount of people in your army. It's determined on the experience level of your army. So they're a little bit better than us, obviously, because our guys are just recruits. We haven't upgraded them yet. You get your little menu over here. You can just surrender. They're going to take you prisoner. You're going to lose everything. They're going to take some of your money, and you'll get dragged around the map until they let you go. You can try to get away. You're going to lose quite a bit of troops, and you might not be successful, or you can just send your troops in. Uh, that's something you'll do a lot later in the game. Definitely not right now, though. We'll just go ahead and attack. All right, jumping in. Obviously, you spawn on your horse. You've got your ranged weapon, and you have a morning star. Um, uh, okay, when it comes to having your army, there are macros on the keyboard. 
Uh, if you click one, that selects just the footmen. Two is the archers. Three would be your horse cavalry. And four would be your mounted archers. We only have footmen right now, though. But if you go into it, you can see on the left there, there are some other options. What I usually like to do is click shield wall form. So F3, F2, shield wall. They don't have shields. So for now, we're just going to have them slowly advance. Because these guys will just sit there and throw rocks at us. Just do the best we can to pick off some guys and give our troops a little bit of help here. Gotta watch our health. Okay, our guys have lost morale and they are now retreating. This is not looking good for us. We're gonna give it our best shot though. One good thing is we have a bow. So if we can just keep our distance, not get hit by those rocks and pick them out as they run towards us, we should be dandy. You really want to go for headshots. Obviously, you gain the most, you inflict the most damage with headshots. But sometimes, if you got to move, you just go for whatever shot you can get. Oof. The longer you hold the draw, obviously, the less accurate it becomes. If you need to reset it, just right click and he'll reset the arrow. So our horse is getting pretty weak here. We don't want to lose the horse. If we do, we are absolutely screwed. So there's no way we can take on this many guys at once. Uh-oh. We're about to lose the horse. is not looking good for us folks we are highly inaccurate okay it seems like they've ran out of rocks oh they're actually retreating oh awesome looks like we might be able to pull through on this one so obviously I do not recommend attacking Parties that are larger than yours, especially in the beginning of the game. Um, a little bit of the fighting mechanics now here that we have a breath. The combat in this game is directional. So to swipe, uh, to attack from the right, you'd swipe to the right. Your guy will swing right, left. Overhead is up and stab is down, as you can see there. Uh, defending goes the same. I, however, have turned that off. I don't really care for directional blocking. So for me, right click just blocks any direction that they're swinging. But if a guy were swinging at me from his left on my right side, I'd have to swipe to the right to block right, etc. for every direction up overhead and down blocks stabs. Um, tab to get out of here tells us what happened. So the attacker army being the looters, uh, 14 deaths, five wounded and two retreated. Defenders, we've had six deaths, Five wounded and four retreated. Gained a little bit of renown and a little bit of morale. Here we go. Prisoners. Uh, oh, no, we can carry 12. Cool. We'll take all the prisoners. We can go to town and sell those for a little bit of money. And starting out, this is what you do. You fight looters to get all this sweet, sweet loot. Go to town, sell it, rinse and repeat. So two, these are the guys that were treated. You can chase them and attack them, but uh, as you see, their speed is 3.4, our speed 3.5. Being that they're that far away, it would take quite some time to catch them. Your speed changes throughout terrains, as mentioned previously. See how slow my horse got there. Now it's 2.3, back to 3.5. And also down here, if you extend this, 
little uh, map bar, we can see our overall party speed. So overall it's 5.05. .05. You can see the buffs and nerfs to it there. So we're in town now and we need to sell off everything that we just got just to uh, sustain our wretched, wretched early game lifestyle. Uh, if you hold control, you'll actually sell everything in that category. So if I control click butter, I'd sell all of it, even though I only have one. And then shift will sell five at a time. Let's see, we've got eight food, but I just made 406. So let's go ahead and buy some butter's only 12. Ooh, dates are only nine. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at the amount they had, not the price. Disregard that. All right, so as we can see down here now, our character has gained a level. Here are, is the um, the leveling screen, I guess you would call it. Uh, up here, once you get clan members or companions, you can scroll through this and see where your companions are at, and they'll have the exact same layout here, and you can go through and upgrade them. As you can see, the green bar is due to the attribute points that we have placed inside of this category here and the actual bar is where we're currently at and the green bar just helps us i believe it is as long as the green bar is there it's easier to acquire xp so you can essentially level up to this point a lot faster than if there were no green bar Let's see if any of ours have none no i'm pretty sure they're all gonna have something but as you can see here it's, it's pretty close on this one so once we get to this point, it will take a little bit longer to level up. But right now, let's go ahead and look at the perks that we have the chance of unlocking. Bow control reduces accuracy penalty by moving by 30%. Bow equipped troops in your formation gave 5% damage with bows. Uh, increase your headshot damage bonus by 30% with bows. Bow equipped troops in your formation gain plus 20 archery skill. Like I had mentioned before, you want to go for headshots. Uh, and later in the game, with stronger weapons, headshots, one-shot kills. We're going to go with headshots. You can see here we have two free focus points. Focus points which you use um, to increase the level of the attribute. I tend to hold on to these until I notice that a particular skill has been capped on. Uh, by that I mean the line here has reached the end of the green. And then I'll go ahead and throw a focus point in there. Because obviously the first one to reach it is the one we're using the most, which is the most advantageous. All right, so um, that's starting out. You're, you're just going to go around, build up your guys, be very careful of where you walk on the map, try not to get attacked or jumped, fight looters, get their loot, go to town, sell the loot, rinse and repeat until you're at a good spot. So we're going to go ahead and save that here. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, perhaps there will be a part two. Thanks for watching.